Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use um, CSS and HTML in order to create a split screen layout on my web page. Okay, now this particular split screen, what I'm imagining here is that I'm going to have a pane taking up the top 50% and a pane taking up the bottom 50%. But I'm also going to throw in a little absolute positioning there just as an extra exercise. So head on over to my script, and there's not much in here, or my page. But on the container, uh, or in the, page, in the body of the page, I do have a div container, and I'm going to go ahead and create another div for, i use a class, class equals the top. and class equals the bottom. Now I just did a similar video where we split the screen into left and right panes and I used display flex for that and that was a pretty good solution. In fact, display flex could work here, but I'm going to not use display flex for this particular layout just to do something a little different. Now in the style, what I'm going to do, um, I will go ahead and create a rule for my container and I'm going to set the min height to be 100 VHs or viewport heights. I want to make sure my container fills up the space. And then I'm going to go to the top, dot top, and I will set its height to be 50, v, uh, 50 VHs, and I'm going to give it a background color. Now I'll do something similar for the bottom pane. and give it a slightly different color. Let's go ahead and save that and see how it's looking. Okay, well I clearly have a top portion and a bottom portion. Now just to add another element to this, I'm going to go to that top portion, and I'm going to create a square in here. And I'm going to style that square. Let's see, I'll set its width to be 12 M's and its height to be 12 M's. And let's give it a nice background color of yellow. And we should be able to visualize that square. I can't visualize that square yet because I did hashtag div and I should be doing hashtag square. Save that, browser refresh, there it is. But I want that square to actually be kind of diamond shaped and I want it to be right in the middle of these two. So um, that square is inside of my top pane. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a position relative on that top pane and that's gonna make it easy for me to go to my square and do position absolute. Now that I'm doing position absolute, I can say I want this to be zero pixels from the bottom and I'm gonna say 50% from the left. Let's see where that gets me. Pretty close. I want this square to be a little bit further down and a little bit more to the left. Now for the down part, I'm simply gonna adjust its bottom positioning to half of the um, height of the square. So I'm gonna do negative 6 M's. That'll move that square downward, so now it's covering up the line. I need to move it a little bit to the left as well. And I need to nudge this thing over, this square over, so I'm going to go ahead and use a um, transform translate x. I just used translate y in my previous video. Translate x is going to allow me to nudge this thing over 50%. So by putting in negative 50%, that's going to move it to the left, and that 50% corresponds to 50% of the width of the square. So when I save this and browser refresh, it's now nicely in the middle. I want to do one more thing. I want to add an additional transform here. I'm just going to use a space and I will do rotate negative 45 degrees, although I could have done a positive 45 degrees to rotate, rotate this into a diamond pattern. So now we have a slightly different design and you can do similar things. So let your creativity flow. Imagine a large background uh, hero image perhaps on one of these panes, text, navigation menu, perhaps the company logo could be right there in the middle. There's lots of things you can do with this. So transform translate X. Now, although I use negative 50%, I could have technically done negative six M's, which is half of the width of the square. Doing that would be exactly the same, 
no difference. I do like the idea of putting the 50% in because then if I change my mind about the dimensions of this square, maybe I want it to be bigger and I'll do 20M width and 20M height, I don't have to adjust any of my other characteristics. Actually, it looks like I do have to adjust some characteristics because I'm positioning it from the bottom by 6Ms, so I will need to change that. And now I've got that larger diamond there. So there we go. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but hopefully you'll find this to be a pretty easy way to create a split screen layout that is um, split vertically.